Academy Gymnastic Club in Portshead, and we move on here to Larissa Yordash on floor. The leader in qualification. First tumble. Double twisting, double back, nailed. Beautiful choreography. Pulling back out, second tumble. Little step back, nothing major. Really selling this floor well. Superb height and lightness on the Leap Series. Round of flick, triple twist. And a quadruple spin. Very securely performed. Big effort for the last tumble. Round of flick, double tuck. Landed very nicely. What about that then? Really well choreographed routine. She used the music well, didn't she? Expressive through the face, everything. I, I thought that was excellent. She And you know, she's excellent on the dance things as well. That quadruple spin is very difficult. Her leaps are super high and her tumbling is fantastic. This is the double double, I think. Double somersault, double twist, and you know, talk about know your distance right into the corner. And there again, you can see she didn't stand on two feet in the corner and wait. Following the new rules, she moved from a dance position straight in. It's changed it a little bit for the gymnasts in that they have to be a bit more secure on their tumbling. They can't just stand in the corner and think, think, think. They have to be able to move straight into it and a relatively straightforward final tumble, but beautifully landed. Beautiful routine, and uh, for an outsider's point of view, I prefer the new rule to the floor. We don't see the gymnast standing in the corner for such a long time, uh, and I think it keeps the whole floor, the routine, a lot better. And uh, she scored 14.4 in qualification, so uh, I think it should be somewhere around that. And she's, these gymnasts are so enormously fit. She's barely puffing after that fantastic floor routine. It's one minute, 30 seconds of constant movement with the most difficult skills dotted about. And uh, really, you can imagine the volume of work they've done to be able to perform a routine like that with such confidence. Phenomenal work and the quadruple spin. Imagine you had to wet, go for a jog for 60 seconds and then spin around. You know, the difficulty in that is unbelievable. <laughs> nice little picture there of uh, spraying the bar. The gymnasts sort of spray the water towards the bar so that the bar isn't soaked, but it's moist. And then uh, put the chalk in exactly how they like. And as we were saying, Jana Siklova, if you're over a certain height, you're allowed the bars to be put up one or two holes. But of course, it sort of delays the competition a little bit. Here, Octavian Ballou talking to uh, Larissa Yordash, and look at that score 14.866. The judges saw, thought the same as us, Craig. Well, I think we should maybe take up judging, Christine, because <laughs> uh, it was a fabulous routine and it was easy to see that that's the best floor routine we've seen today so far. I don't think the judging bit's hard when they're like that. <laughs> you can see the good ones. <laughs> it's when you have to choose between the not so good ones that's more tricky, I think. And uh, certainly that score. Uh, increases your dash's lead only two uh, pieces of apparatus the gymnasts have performed as yet and we haven't quite had everybody performing two pieces of apparatus yet so uh, we have to wait till they've all done just that you can see the uh, gymnasts chalking up they, they wear handguards. Most gymnasts wear handguards. You don't have to wear handguards for asymmetric bars, but most gymnasts choose to. When you work on bars, swing for an hour a day. The hands get worn pretty thin if you don't wear handguards. 
Uh, lots of blisters and lots of tears in the early days, uh, but I think your your hands sort of build up a bit of a, a resilience to it, and uh, even the top guys when they're training uh, will be contending with blisters on a weekly basis. So it's really important that. Uh, you do wear some protection. I've noticed some of the girls use a bit of a bandage rather yep. than the leather guard. Uh, yeah. Different countries will use different sort of things. The trouble is if you if they don't wear hand guards, if they wear a bit of a bandage, they also like the bar scrubbed quite clean chalk. So sort of within a team, you really want to have your whole team using the same sort of system. So that, ah, and here we go. No. Van Claveren from the Netherlands performing very nice turn off with half turn into a nice high front somersault to re-grasp the same bar. It's one, and the Pax Alto, the transfer from the high bar down to the low. Little bit of loss of leg form on that shoot up to the high bar and the handstand. And oh, now that was a late pirouette, you could see. But she recovered well. And all a bit of an alternative technique on that full twisting double back. And she sort of got stuck halfway round. I think she pulled into the bar a little bit too much there on the dismount. And uh, it was almost put the hands down to save myself. Uh, she did struggle through that routine. It looks like she might have caused a bit of injury. As you can see there, that first turn down was a bit late and then obviously it had an effect to the rest of the routine. Now she really struggled on the full turn that we saw and then I think just pulled in. We might just see here, look, she pulls in a little bit and it stalls in the air, got a little bit disorientated there and then had to put her hands down, which will cost her heavily. Cost her heavily and you can see she did put a bit of a straight arm down. I don't think she's badly hurt, but it'll be a bit uncomfortable. Really twisted a little bit early, didn't she, off the bar? But quite difficult when you've had a long wait like that. She obviously, because the bar went up for the gymnast before her, it was a long wait she had for, for her performance. And she's a young gymnast. It will have been um, really quite a test for her. The coach is carrying the bags. Gymnasts just themselves and their performances to worry about. This is where the gymnasts really need to focus now. Two rounds down, two to go. Uh, checking up on the scoreboard. They'll be wanting to see where they are. So after two pieces of apparatus, Larissa Yordashi stays out there in the lead, but things have changed just a little bit below. Julia Steingruber, after her two best piece of apparatus, moves up into second. Mustafina stays in third. You can see Ruby Harold has moved up a place uh, from seventh into sixth. As things progress, and we think that Charlie Fellows is just on the next page there, down in 20th. Confirmation of that will be coming up uh, very shortly as the gymnasts prepare to move on and have their little warm up. There you can see Charlie in 20th. So the third piece of apparatus. I mean, it's amazing, Hannah, to think that the competition is it's halfway over. Yeah, it does go quite quickly. I mean, um, it's a bit different when you're actually on the floor competing because you're totally focused on you know your routines. But yeah, um, when you think about it, it's only you know a minute, a minute and a half on each, well, on three pieces, and then 10 second vault, and then yeah, that's yeah. it. So you've got Mustafina here and Yordash, are they going over to vault now? And I mean, we saw a phenomenal performance on floor from Yordash. You think, where, when is it going to end? But actually, she's qualified for, for vault in, with the fourth highest score. Yeah, um, no, it was a fantastic floor team from uh, Lordash. And I know Mustafina and uh, Lordash have got um, the same start by you on vault. They're both doing double twisting Uchenkos. So it'll be interesting to see um, what scores they get. Yeah, and uh, we were just saying as well there, uh, Lewis, that uh, Steingrim, she's done a, basically her best too, really, so she's put it all out there. I think she's moving over to bars now and uh, just expect to see her just drop down a little. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think that's a given. I mean, she, she went out there with the best performances, got great scores, gave herself the best chance. I think now she can really start to enjoy the rest of the competition and see where she can finish. 
show. Well, um, Ruby Harrell doing incredibly well. She's moving up a place. I mean, that's all you can ask, obviously. And here she is uh, on beam. She's in the beam final as well. Um, obviously, you're only allowed two gymnasts per country in there, so things kind of change a little bit after qualification. But, you know, she'll be looking to build on, on her score, obviously, here. Yeah, and she got um, a personal best on beam in the qualification, so... Um, the same, if not better, will be a great achievement for Charlie on beam, uh, for Ruby on beam. Yeah, and then uh, and Charlie for her third piece of apparatus on floor. How does she fare on floor? Um, it's actually one of her uh, best pieces, and she's a great tumbler. Um, she had a fall in qualification, so I'm sure she'll be hoping to um, improve on that today. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting dynamic, this, with the Europeans, because it kind of piggybacks, doesn't it, from the kind of the all-around to the team. And, Christian, how, how, how do you feel that works out within the British camp, then? I think everyone sort of has adjusted to that's the system there and that's how it works and um, for me personally I much prefer the, the, the team competition but the individual really gives you a, an opportunity to specialise on certain apparatus and to really go hard and, and push on with the individual apparatus so yeah. it's, uh, it's different dynamics but uh, it is still an enjoyable competition. When I mean, you look at the likes of your dash there I mean it's obviously brilliant individually on all of the apparatus and then you put her in the team as well I mean you've got a winning combination. Exactly exactly I mean if, any, if you can sort of have a gymnast that can contribute on maybe two or three apparatus and then have other gymnasts that can contribute on one or two apparatus then you can start to put together a, a really strong team and that's what the Romanians I think will be doing this year and next year. Yeah and you're always used to as a gymnast aren't you training in what's known as Olympic order so with this it's a little bit different because there's kind of this random draw that gets thrown in there do you think that will throw the gymnasts at all not actually being with those that they're competing with they're actually in different groups um, I think it depends on the gymnast um, I mean I'm one of those gymnasts who'll just focus on my own routines I don't really tend to look around uh, the competition arena and see what else is going on but I'm sure the likes of Mustafina is you know looking out of the corner right at what Lord Ash is doing and yeah. you know what all the other top contenders are doing and making sure she's just ahead of them. Oh, exactly well we will be uh, joining the gymnasts that are leading really on on vault here this is uh, must have been a former world champion in the all around and obviously looking to build somewhat on her score with two pieces of apparatus left to go let's hand down to the commentary box with Christine Still and Craig Heath. And uh, Alia Mustafina stands at the end of the vault runway, ready to uh, emphasise her bid for this title. She was third all around at the Olympic Games, and I would say she's still coming back to her best. Yep, I totally agree with you there, Christine. 5.8 difficulty, scored 15 in qualification, certainly needs a good vault now. Powers down the runway, Yuchenko, double twist, nailed absolutely perfect, fantastic vault, look at that. Beautiful performance, uh, she, you know, she, we have seen her compete before, two and a half twists, and in fact that was what she did, damaged her knee on in competition, so for, I think the double twist is well within her grasp, and she made it look like it, didn't she? Absolutely, uh, really, really well powered down the runway, look at this. Good strike onto the vault there, reaches back, big block, double twist, very tight in the legs, and then nailed. And I think psychologically, knowing she's not doing the two and a half, gives her extra confidence. Look at that there, bang, two, double twist, lands. Tiny bit off direction, I mean, that the white line down the middle shows you if the gymnast is bang in line she was slightly off to one side but only a very small amount of point one deduction she had a tiny bit of a bent leg but there were no steps so she didn't give anything else away that was she'll be very happy with that absolutely and uh, keep the pressure on the top girls there Little smile there 15.033 Ah, she's happy with those scores. Just bars left, which of course is her favourite apparatus. Yep. Next up, the young Italian. Eliza Meneghini. Five difficulty. Yuchenko, full twist, very nice. In the middle, slight hop back, but plenty of height. Very clean vault in there. 
And that's uh, probably a little bit the difference of the junior gymnast. You know, she won junior European championships last year, first year senior. I'm sure in training you're seeing double twists, but uh, not quite ready yet. And the wise coach uh, doesn't put it out until it's absolutely ready. But lovely technique, super straight body. Yeah, great height and block off the top. You, you're dead right there, Christine. That'll be doing double twisting training uh, all day long. But like you say, it's the maturity of the coach and the gymnast to realise, make it safe and do a good clean vault. There we are, 13.866.